Hey, welcome to a new video. Just finished working and I want to talk about a few things this week. I managed to get a new strap for my travel wide, which yes, it is a shoelace, but it's the only thing that I can put on the camera without making any major damage in the camera. So that will work for now. It's really lightweight camera, so you're not going to have a problem with it being too heavy. Some news that are not related to me are that Impossible is going to come out with a new camera Monday 11th, I think of April, so that's pretty good news. Then we also have Japan Camera Hunter, even though it's all news, is coming out with a new film, which is a resurrected film from Agfa. It's a 400 speed, black and white, high contrast film. It was mainly used for surveillance film, traffic, radars, and things like that. So it should be contrasty and kind of grainy, but that's what he said he liked, and he's making that film available on pre-order in his website already. Another news is that New 55 is coming out with a Kickstarter for color peel apart film. It will be a 4x5 peel apart film like their New 55 black and white. Back in the darkroom. Today I'm going to contact print 4x5s that I've been shooting these days on Ilford warm tone fiber based paper and then I develop on Ilford multigrade 2. Then I use Ilford Ilfo stop to stop my bath and then I use Rabbit Fixer to fix the paper. Then as you can see here I have an Archival washer. I do a pre-wash on a big tray and then I put them there for an hour. So let's turn off the main light. Here you have one of the contact prints as you can see. Even though it's pushed to 1600, you can't see much grain at all on a contact 4x5. If I do enlarge these, you probably will see a bit of grain, but it probably won't be that ugly. You can see that that guy is pretty much sharp and everything else has a bit of movement on it. I was shooting like a hundredth of a second and these people were walking slow, but they were walking. This is all shot on 4x5 handheld, shooting FOMA 400 pushed to 1600. The reason I'm pushing this film is because I live in a really gray and rainy area of Spain. It's kind of like London in the amount of rain we get a year. So I can't be shooting handheld 4x5 at 400 or less speed. So hopefully 1600 will help me shoot throughout the whole year. As you can see it's always gray here. The setup for the Easter hunt. Size Igon, 50 millimeter Sumicron, and the GoPro in the water case just to not get wet. I had a little shoot with my kids about using the Rolleiflex SL66 and I thought about how many people buy Hasselblads and want to shoot with them all the time and don't know about the Rolleiflex which is pretty much the same kind of camera but the difference in this camera is that you can do extreme close-ups without having to modify anything. If you're shooting a Hasselblad and you want to shoot close-up with the 80 for example your limit is going to be 90 centimeters, which basically means around 3 feet. So if you want to get any closer, you're going to have to get these extension tubes, which make it really complicated. Once you set the extension tubes, if you don't do it in the right order, you will jam your camera and then you have to unjam it and set it up. And then you're going to calculate how much light you lose. But if you're using a Rolleiflex like this one, it just basically has bellows. So as long as you extend it, you will get closer focus to your subject. You can go so, so far that you can basically get a picture of someone's eyelash covering the whole 6x6 frame. And you do get a little exposure compensation chart over here, 
that will tell you how much you have to compensate per extension. So all the way fully extended, you have to do 1.5 stops, but if you go only a little bit, it will go all the way to maybe half a stop, something like that, maybe one stop but it gives you so much flexibility. In the video, you will see how close I got to my daughter and that was with a full extension. All you have to do when you do that is open up the lens or slow down the speeds, which are over here. So this camera is really versatile. The only problem is that it's usually harder to find backs or other things, but it's just as good as a Hasselblad. It's a little bigger, but it works really well. Another problem you have is the flash sync is only a 30th of a second with this camera, as if, on the Hasselblad, it's up to 1 500th of a second because the shutter is inside the lens, which means it's a leaf shutter, so you can shoot as fast as the lens will go. This, one, this one's a little focal shutter, which means the rear curtain is the one doing the shutter. So you can also mount any lens you want. Another great feature you have on this camera is that if you think that wasn't close enough, you can mount the lens the other way around without any adapter. So you take off your lens, you turn it around and you mount it. And now you have the most extreme close-up you can probably get on one of this, these cameras. I've never tried this configuration. I don't even know how to calculate the bellows for this, but it probably shoots super close without having to get any special adapters. That's a great thing about the Broly Flexes. trying to say is if you want to get up close to a subject and fill the frame on a 6x6 or any medium format, try to find a camera that will have bellows like the Mamiya RZ67, the Rolleiflex SL66 and some other cameras that will ha have that possibility of using bellows and letting you get up close without having to modify the lens or add any extension tubes or anything like that. Mm -hmm.